那么呃第三个，我想，二零零八年以后，呃，汉藏之间的关系以及发展。那么二零零八年遍及整个西藏的这样一些抗议活动，尤其是奥运火炬的传递过程中所发生的一些冲突冲撞以后，中国政府是竭尽所能的挑动民主仇恨。呃，藏人放火砸车、殴打汉人的录像在中国是各地被反复的播放。安全部门公然的禁止大部分的旅馆接待西藏人或者维吾尔人。呃，中国很多的城市也出现了歧视攻击西藏人或维吾尔人的这样一些现象。虽然是这样，但是在与王立群等很多中国知识分子以上书或各种形式表达了对此的不满或对西藏人的同情。同时，也有几十个中国的律师公开的表示，愿意为被捕的西藏人进行辩护。尤其令人感动的是，竟然有上至少有上千的中国知识分子，以各种方式写文章，表明了对西藏人的同情，甚至与支持。而很多些这些文章人都是中在生活在中国境内的知识分子，而这样做并不是说没有任何后果。后来有很多愿意表示愿意为西藏人进行辩护的中国的律师。被当局注销了律师的这样一个执照。二零零八年后的另外一个变化是，二零零八年抗议的另一个变化是，中国政府不得不面对西藏民族的整体性，开始不得不面对呃以前一直把西藏说成是呃仅仅不指西藏自治区的这样一些说法。从那以后，中国政府的有关西藏的会议或者政策，基本上就是以五声区或者以藏区等这样的称呼来。呃，涵盖了整个的西藏，同时，呃，在境外的华人也积极的响应，呃，达呃达赖喇嘛的呼吁，汉藏协会在世界各地都是相聚的成立，呃，而中文中有关西藏的文章，你如果统粗的看，大多是也是批评呃中国政府的巨作。目前，前来达赖喇嘛的华人也越来越多，而且各种网络媒体等也都在不断的出现。在台湾，甚至有佛教徒帮助成立的雪域出版社等，专门出版有关西藏的书籍。当然，由于中国政府对媒体和信息流通的严格的控制，大部分中国人民仍然不能享有知道真相和真实的权利和机会。所以，通过各种途径让中国人民了解真相，是解决西藏问题最重要、最关键的一环。随着信息传递的技术，希望。通过大家的努力，相信这一切都可以逐步的得到改善。好，谢谢大家。So I know Tibetan relations after、uh, 2008 protest. In 2008, protests took all took place all over Tibet, particularly so after the Olympic torch relay. In light of these events, the Chinese government devised numerous strategies to create discord between Tibetan and Chinese people. For example, the repeated broadcast of choreographed Video footage of Tibetans beating Chinese people and burning their homes. Moreover, under the direct order of the Chinese of the, of the state Chinese security department, Tibetan and Uyghur were not allowed to stay in hotels and guest houses in China. They were discriminated against by the Chinese people in, the, in many parts of China. However, a group of scholars such as Wang Yishong expressed their support for the Tibetan people. A few Chinese lawyers even expressed their desire to legally represent, in court, Tibetans who were arrested. Even more surprising, more than a thousand articles were written on the Chinese inter on the internet by the Chinese people supporting Tibetans during that time. Most of which were written from the mainland China at their own risk. For instance, many of the Chinese lawyers who expressed their willingness to help Tibetans had their license confiscated. On the other hand. After the 2008 protests in all parts of Tibet, the Chinese government began to include Tibetans, Tibetan areas outside the Tibet Autonomous Region during discussions such as the Tibet Walk Forum. Similarly, the Chinese living outside China established many Sino-Tibetan groups and expressed their support for the Tibetan cause by writing articles and openly criticizing the Chinese government. At present, the number of Chinese visiting Dharamsala is increasing every year. And there are over 10 Chinese websites and radios advocating for the Tibet issue. Chinese language journals are being published in Dharamsala, Taiwan, and USA. Similarly, a group of Chinese supporters has established the Gangjiang Press in Taiwan, which has published several books on Tibet. Other than these journals and websites on the Tibet issue, there are many other journals and websites dedicated to Tibetan religion and culture. However, due to the Chinese government's restriction on 
freedom of press and expression, it has been hard for the Chinese people to access these mediums of information. Therefore, it becomes very important to create awareness among Chinese people from outside China. We therefore urge you to introduce the Tibet issue to mainland Chinese, to encourage as many Chinese as possible to visit Dharamsala, to introduce as many Tibet-related websites in Chinese language to the Chinese people. CTA's offices in Tibet and Tibet Buddhist centers around the world are of great source of information on the Tibet issue. Efforts should be made to introduce Chinese or facilitate their visit to these centers. Thank you.